Hello and welcome back to my art studio. I'm going to be drawing this kingfisher in pastels today and here is the reference material and I'll provide that for you in the description box. So the supplies I'm using for the kingfisher, well first of all I print out the reference material and I print this out to the same size as the blank surface for which I'm using. I find this is the easiest way for beginners to work as there's less challenge when you don't have to alter the size from the reference. I'm using pastel matte paper here, I'm almost finished my drawing, but it's the same size at 8 by 10 inches. I use pan pastels which are compressed pigments in a cake form. They have numbers and names on the back and you apply these with, with various sponge applicators and in this case I'm using some eyeshadow applicators to get into the smaller areas but you can also use cotton swab tips or any sponges of various sizes depending on the size of your work. I also like to use a paper towel to wipe them off between uses and also colours. I use a kneaded eraser to erase my initial sketch lines and I like to use a Prismacolor sharpener that's made by the company Stabilo. For my pastel pencils, I use a variety of whatever I have lying around. So just use what you have. This one's a Fat Conte a Paris pencil. This one is a Stabilo Carbothello. And I also have some Geoconda Coe Nors. It doesn't really matter which brand you use, I just happen to have these. I suppose in general I use Stabilos, not because I think they're better, but because I'm kind of in the habit of using them and they are easy to sharpen in a normal, regular, handheld sharpener. The other ones have some punchy colours which I don't always need, so just use what you have and I like to hold my shavings in a little plastic container. I really like to use this General's 558 pencil for the whitest whites, meaning the highlights. And I like to use pencil extenders. You pull the metal part down and then insert your pencil into it and then you push back up to hold it in place. It just extends the length of a really short pencil. I use low tack artist tape to hold down the paper and I tape it down to a melamine white surface, which I like just because it's easy to clean. And then the only other thing that I use is a sheet of glassine so that when I'm working on a particular area, I don't smudge the side of my hand. So don't forget to use something to shield your hand. And I usually test out the colours on a small piece of scrap pastel mat because I want to see what the colours actually look like and I blend them in and just see how they're going to work for me. Colours don't always look the same from the outside as they do once you apply them to the page. But anyway, that's it for the supplies for this little kingfisher. I've sketched out an accurate outline for the kingfisher and the first thing I'm doing is creating a very light background with my pastel pencils and I'm going over the edges of the outlines because I don't want to create any halos because when I'm filling in the bird later on these are going to be much more challenging to add in. 
I'm using an extremely light pressure with my hand held way back from the tip of the pencil because I want to keep things really loose. I'll be adding another layer in and another layer on top also. I start applying some colours to the base layer of the Kingfisher now with the Pan Pastel. This area is pretty small so I'm being very careful with my edges and using just the tip of the applicator and I'm going in the direction that the fur, uh, rather the feathers are going. These colours are very dark so I'm either going to just wipe off the colour on a paper towel or I'll simply grab another applicator when I change the colours. Using Pan Pastel as a base layer significantly speeds up the process because it will just be really time consuming to add all the little details in at this stage with pastel pencils. It also tends to add depth, it delineates some of the bird's shape and also musculature. At this stage I can be really bold with my colour application because I know I'm going to be layering on top. Pan pastels and pastels are a vibrant medium and are fun to work with. It's really immediate and there are really no mistakes. Light colours can successfully be placed over dark colours, which is something you just can't easily achieve in hardly any other mediums. So I find it's a really stress-free or rather low-stress medium to work with because I can just kind of figure it out as I go along knowing that I can't make the mistakes. I'm choosing to work on the eye of the Kingfisher now. I've changed to a pastel pencil in black for some contrast and at this point I'm, zo I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Now sometimes using black can dull artwork but I'm really going for the greatest contrast here set against a white or pale grey outline so I'm not worried about it because it's a really tiny area. Maybe in other instances I'd add another colour to the black. Now I made a poor decision here and laid down a paper towel but because it's pastel and therefore forgiving I was able to cover the smudges that it left so really glassine is your best bet not paper towel. And I'm not using anything else for this eye, just really a black and also a white pencil for the highlights. So continuing to work with the head area, I'm using that General's 558 pencil that I mentioned earlier to add some really bright whites. Notice how bright it is. Now I want to be careful with this pencil because it's hard to cover over this particular white for some reason. So I only make sure that I use it for highlights and never for things like initial outlines, just because you can never cover it up. I'm using short strokes, flicking motions and adding in dark greys, a couple of blues, light blues and dark blues. There are some eucalyptus trees and also leaves in the background area of this drawing. To be honest, I'm not really adding too much detail to these areas because I really want the central focus to be the kingfisher. And we always want a central focus for any drawing or painting that we do. For the eucalyptus, I'm using a couple of different browns, a reddish brown and a dark brown, about four different greens um, and I'm also using an orange surprisingly and some white. While I'm not adding a huge amount of detail to the eucalyptus here, I'm making sure I add some details in the branch creating some three-dimensional shapes such as shine on leaves, hollows, crevices and I'm doing this to add some 
realism and I add some believability in with this. So this is a mixture of looking at the reference material but also some liberal creative license. Getting back to the main body of the Kingfisher, if areas are starting to get a little bit grainy, I can use a sponge applicator. And since this is just a layer, it can be almost completely blurred out. And that's absolutely fine because it creates a nice blend of colours upon which to blend subsequent layers. I'm using lots of vibrant oranges, as always, very importantly, not just going in the direction of the feathers, but also making the necessary lengths, length of strokes, going from a rich orange, mixing with lighter oranges, and looking at the underside of the kingfisher from the reference photo here. So there's a nice range of oranges that I'm using with these Stabilo Carbothellos. There's a fluffiness and a softness that I want to make sure I emulate. So I'm using a soft movement, very light touching, touches, lifting my hand with every stroke. And I'm not worrying about every single little detail, but I'm still looking closely at the reference material. And I find that squinting my eyes helps a lot to kind of see things differently. The kingfisher's wing area can seem to be rather tricky and a bit intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. And I think the best way to approach it is to begin with a good base layer, which we have, and to see the area as a series of shapes. Each individual feather or even little series of feathers don't need to be included. And sometimes just a semblance of the shape and shadow <coughs> will be enough, because remember that most viewers of our artwork will not be looking as closely at the finished piece anywhere near as closely as you and I are now. Simplifying the shapes is easier and more believable. I know that the shadows are much darker underneath the feathers, and so I can go ahead and place them in with a darker value. I know that lots of colours exist in birds, so a kingfisher isn't just one blue. He may be different blues and teals, and often birds have many greys and dark blues, so I'll include those in, not forgetting the lighter hues at the wing tips. Before I call a piece of artwork complete, I always add quite a few refinements but I try not to overwork the piece, which is easier said than done. Once I'm finished, I can remove the masking tape and my kingfisher is ready for framing. Once again, many thanks for joining me today and please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell if you'd like to hear about my new content. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.